Hello students, this is going to guide you through the dual credit condo ad. Uh, very important, you must have this document open. You must, and you must go line by line and do not miss anything and double check everything before you go to the next one. So starting at the top, new Photoshop document, you should know, be, uh, all know how to do this. Um, number two, set the guides, um, just a quick refresher. Guides are accessed by the ruler, so Command R to show the ruler and if you click with your move tool on the ruler and drag down you will drag a guide into the document just like that but I've already set up my guides at one quarter inch and if you and you will need to zoom in here to see where that quarter inch line is all the way around and then two and a half vertical and then three and seven horizontal so get that done alright so after you've done that we're gonna move on to the next um, thing to do, transform and arrange. We're going to place these objects, uh, these images that are in that folder that you will be able to download the zip folder and um, you're going to place those in the document. So here we go. Uh, you don't copy and paste. Um, you place and the way you do that you go under file and we're going to place embedded so we're not going to have to link those. Now wherever you saved yours um, I don't know but look for it, find it, and you want to grab all of them. So I'm going to go dual credit, module 7, assets, and we're taking all of these images here. So I'm going to select them all. Oh, Photoshop only lets you select one. Illustrator will let you select them all, but first one we're going with is a logo. Let's just go ahead and put them all in there. So as you grab each of these, you want to refer to where they go. So that first item is this one right here. And it looks like it's snapped in this little area right here. So there's the item. Let's go back and look at it real quick. I wish I could put it side by side, but then it would make the images real small, or the frame real small, and you couldn't see. A little less than half. And so I'm going to put that right there. This is where snap comes in handy. Um, you're going to snap to those guides, and it's a little bit smaller. I'm not going to completely position or size it, but this is where I'm going to put it. I'm going to hit return on my keyboard or enter, same thing. And then I'm going to go and place the other object. So go ahead and place all of your objects, please. So uh, after you place those, or as you're placing those, uh, keep in mind it's easier to put them side by side and look, especially this top one. You'll see I'm trying to line up where the uh, crop edge is on the example because that's exactly what you're going by that example so keep that in mind when you size um, and hold down shift you know that so after you've done some sizing uh, you probably want to put them in the correct order and you might want to resize them so looking at here I see this is in front of this so I'm going to select that layer and bring it to the top and I see this is in front of that so I'm going to select that layer so put them in the correct stack in order, and I'm also going to resize this one right here. This one is, uh, oops, not that one, but this one right here. This one is, uh, way, well, not that one. It's way too small, or way too big. Anyway, get it done. All right, please keep in mind, you may have to tweak this image a little bit with transformation and um, maybe stretching or squashing it just a little bit to make it work because it does not fit the way it shows in the, um, in the example. So... Anyway, next step. It says to tweak the background layer. Uh, let's go on up there and zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on. Yes, we're going to use a foreground to back a foreground to transparent gradient on the background layer by sampling the JPEG layer in the lower left corner. So the condo.jpg image, um, which one was that? I do believe that was. If I go back to place embedded and just look at the thumbnails, it should show me. Condo.jpg is this one, so it's this one, right? So the lower left corner of that one. So we're going to select that one, press I for our eyedropper tool, and uh, make sure it's on the normal eyedropper tool, none of these other ones, 3D or any, anything. And I'm going to zoom in here because you really can't see that far back. Lower left corner, and I'm on 11 by 11. That yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, so I sampled that, and it says to add a gradient to the background layer. I don't have a background layer. You might. I don't. So I just create a new layer and I'm going to name it background. Oh, brother. And 
and I'm going to add a gradient G for my gradient tool and it says to choose foreground of transparent so I'm going to rest over it's going to tell me what it is there it is and I'm going to zoom back a little bit and I'm assuming um, the transparency is going to go to the back color let's look at the example foreground of transparent okay so foreground is below transparent is above and this is where the uh, transition or the gradient is going to appear so here we are back on uh, Photoshop I'm gonna zoom back a little bit so I can see the frame and you should just add a gradient to that background and make that transition appear right there so I'm gonna click and drag right about there that's not enough I'm gonna undo that I'm gonna go from here to here uh, I really can't see that you get it the way you like it and let's move on okay uh, just follow the directions I've moved forward um, uh, as far as type, now you don't have that first type that's listed here, uh, the Santa Fe 14. I have used um, Lucinda handwriting here. So Lucinda handwriting as far as the type or any one that you think is a script that looks good on um, this one right here. Uh, apparently not this one right here. And then you do have the Gothic copper plate, the copper plate Gothic all caps for this down here. Now keep in mind you're going to need the character panel to track out this header down here as well as make sure you are, you are clean and using your fonts in the same size. I just pulled my plug out. Sorry about that, lost my plug, but in the same size um, all of these fonts here are the same size. And please, if I see layers that are not doing anything, uh, you better get rid of them and everything needs to be labeled it says it right here all layers must be named keep on track okay uh, you need to add the other type there um, the Gloucester for the for inform for for, for more information call such and such number I uh, just added that and it's important guys if I see that the type is not aligned where it should be aligned in the example here you will be marked off see how that type aligns right up to that edge right there now as far as the other font that we substituted I will give leeway there like uh, lush landscaping there but um, let's move forward uh, very important follow directions guys follow directions I'm gonna scroll back up here copper plate we have the Gloucester with the phone number the phone number is exact exactly how it's written there very important um, uh oh new layer 20 dot spaced hard round brush now just a quick review how to draw straight lines in Photoshop with a brush or how to make dots and things like that um, you should know how to do that but here's a quick refresher let's do it so in your image you're just looking uh, to see if it's pretty much aligned with what you have going on here in the example and there is enough space there we're trying to create this row of dots right here so in Photoshop we want B for our brush and the very next thing we want to do is we want to create a layer just above the background so highlight the background, create new layer, and we want to go ahead and name it dots because all of our layers need to be named. Okay, and we've got our brush. Now it says the size too on the brush on the uh, example here. Sign your ad captions, layer style, clean visage, file name, dotted line, 20 pixel dot spaced, hard round brush, separate layer, light blue. So let's get light blue. Um, let's go ahead and click a color and find a nice light blue we might change this and do it again uh, let's look at the example just real quick uh, it's a little lighter blue than what they have in the background so that's what we'll do is we'll select this background and we'll make a lighter version I'm just gonna pull straight up here there we go and it's 20 pixels so we hit B for a brush now if you hit the brush preset panel here this is where you're gonna space your dots out Okay, so you're going to space your dots out that way. So let's get to 20 pixels. 20 pixels. And let's see what this is going to do. That's going to be a little bit small compared to the example. It's about half the size. Um, it says 20 pixels, so let's see. 20 pixel dot space, hard round, light color blue. So let's see if we'll do it here just click one time one time click 
and then you go down hold down shift and click again it will make a row of dots I don't know if you can see that there see the row of dots there but to me it does not match the example even though it's 20 pixels I'm gonna go 40 because that's how I roll dangerous so I'm gonna command Z and undo that oops gotta click here and command alt Z there we go and let's go up to 40 size opacity needs to be at 100 too by the way that's why it was so light so let's type in 40 this time let's see what we get for that that's a little big let's go 30 so I'm not so concerned about that I'm just concerned that you can draw a straight line with Photoshop or with the dots uh, with using a brush um, you can do it that way holding down shift clicking once and then holding down shift and clicking again or there's another way that you can do it you can uh, click hold down shift and drag to the right and that way you know it's exact and that's what we're all about exact now I hit V and I want to move that dot over and I suggest you do the same okay I think we're about done right here um, if you have any questions message me through Edmodo or just simply raise your hand and ask me um, I went back and changed that Lucinda handwriting to uh, 8 point and then I brought everything up because I needed to match the example so uh, since we use different font here, uh, it doesn't format correctly or the same in the same size. So I, I moved up this stuff so we would keep the dots inside that quarter inch safe zone right there. Do you see that? Here and here. So the last part of your um, assignment, you have to name the file correctly. There's four points right there, guys. Four points. Um, save both JPEG and the PSD file format, but you want to do PSD first, obviously, because then you'll ruin any opportunity of editing any layers. Um, you're done, basically. You need both of them. Um, and put them in a folder on your desktop. Do not upload them. I want you to take a screenshot, a screenshot of your finished ad and upload that to this turn inside. Um, I will ask for the PSD file on Monday or Tuesday with a flash drive. Got it? I will see you then. Bye-bye.